Uh, yeah, you know, there is, uh, there's this, first the thing that you have to do, you have to find a, a, a financial planner that is going to help you through this process. You know, go ahead and, and, and what they do is a good financial planner will do an interview and, and they'll collect this data between the two of you. And, and what we do is we have this interactive planning software, and so we, we get the data and say, all right, uh, John is, uh, is 72, and what's your wife's name, John? Mary. Mary. And so Mary, Mary is age 60, and so what is that going to look like? In, you know, and then we have to have the uncomfortable conversation of, okay, you know, how far out do we need to go? You know, is it, is it 30 years? Is it 15 years? You know, what's your mortality? And you actually have to try to take a guess at it, and then we look, we'll... We'll look at mortality tables and say, all right, say John's got 20 years from here. And what happens to, to John, uh, what happens to Mary if John's no longer around? And we say, is the spending going to change now? And what's a really interesting thing is that, you know, p- particularly people who have been aggressively saving before they retired, they have done two things. It's a double-edged sword. They have not only lowered their, their budget, right, because they're taking some of that money to save, but they've been saving as well. And now... Uh, now you're not going to need to do that. So you've been living on less, and now you have this capital. So you look at that capital and say, how are we going to use that? And you have to look at all your sources, John. You have to say, where is it going to come from? Are you taking Social Security? Is she going to take Social Security? And when is she going to take it? Is she going to have a, an IRA or a 401K that she's going to draw from? Are there investments? Do you have real estate? And you put all that money in a bucket and say, what does that look like going forward? And you stress test it. You say, all right, what happens if, if we have you know a 10 years or five years of not good returns? And we put that on the screen, and there's this crazy thing called a Monte Carlo simulation. And we say, let's stress test our model and see if we can do it. And do you have enough money to retire? That's the question everyone wants to, wants to have answered because change is inevitable. You're, you know, you're going to have changes. The market's going to change. You might have a rally. You might not. It's very important to put all those uh, potential changes in. I think it's, 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 it's 2010 means that, you know, for the, for our listeners is, you know, stuff was on sale. There was, there was PE, you know, they were trading at single digits in some cases, Derek. And, you know, we saw there an enormous opportunity. And then in 2007, we saw some aggressive. And we look at the market right now and say, is it fairly valued? Well, some of the stuff is, is expensive. Right. Well, but but where, where does a retired investor go? And I think this is an important question. Well, and that's you know that's fundamental to the way we we build portfolios at Annex. Is after you've had that conversation, after they've had a chance to look at that financial plan, um, one of the inputs in that financial plan obviously is investment returns, and and we build our models based on a on a backward looking and forward looking array of statistics that that give us a sense of what appropriate risk levels should be in any particular. Uh, client's account, and and we do stress test it in that sense. We rebalance it based on 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 flows, either up or down, within various pieces of the portfolio. So we're constantly looking at risk. Now, for example, with you know this comparison of now to say 2007 and 2008, if you remember, in 2007 we had a real estate boom, we had a, an M and A frenzy, we had liquidity everywhere, we had high valuations, we had a hot IPO calendar, we had an inverted yield curve, we had the Fed tightening. Right now, we do not have the Fed tightening. They are becoming a little bit less commentative, but rates are still low. Credit spreads are behaving well, which means people do not think there's much risk of a recession in the next year or two years. These are things we pay attention to, but right now we don't see those conditions. And that, to me, is one of the major benefits of what we we at Annex call our core and tactical strategy. The idea is, yes, you have core investments in fixed income, equities, and so on, but then you also have tactical investments. And right now our tactical investments are in equities because we believe we are still in a Goldilocks economy, that the valuations... In, in U.S. stocks are not excessive, and in European, they're even more attractive. So, you know, in our view, you know, we're, we're playing the hands that were dealt, and uh, right now we do not really see much risk of recession, which is what we all have to watch out for.